Right, so while the resin's curing on the third uh, side of the sandwich that we're filling up, I've stuck masking tape around the edge. This is the underside of the ESC, that's it facing up. This is the underside circuit. And um, I've basically got these little walls of masking tape to stop the resin falling off the circuit board. And we're now going to flood that with just enough resin to cover up these components. Um, no more than that, we don't want to make it too too thick and bulky. So again back into the helping hands which uh, are kind of invaluable for this kind of thing. Obviously you want to make sure it's nice and nice and horizontal so your resin lays equally on all of it. And uh, here we are mixed up. So I'm just going to bring out as much of that as I can get in one go. Obviously the warmer your environment, the runnier your resin. Um, and this is starting to cure. I probably mixed it up about five minutes ago. What you will find is when you kind of scrape your resin and pick it up, you might think it's gone quite hard and it's just going to sit on top of the circuit board. But as you once you dab it on, you'll find if you just watch it for the sort of next minute or so, the resin sort of if it's in a lump, it'll start to creep down and flatten out. So uh, particularly with this 30 minute cure resin, you've got a, a good lot of time to work on it. Right, so with our extra little bit of resin mixed up and popped on, I don't know how well you can catch that in the light, but you can see it's kind of shiny. So it's all wet now effectively, that's completely coated with a very thin layer of resin, just enough to cover those six black MOSFETs you can see in the middle there. Right, about an hour on, I've peeled off the masking tape around the edge of the ESC. This is the underside of it where we were putting resin on last and the resin's curing it's not hardened yet so I can gently trim it it's about the consistency of clay at the moment so I've just trimmed around the edge around each edge where you find the resin tends to rise up slightly on the masking tape so you end up with a profile that's kind of dipped in the middle and up to the edge so I've trimmed off around there while it's still a bit soft and um, if we get the bottom part of the case you can see that it uh, pretty much fits fine there. Uh, the ESC doesn't sit down quite as far in as before. Uh, the circuit board won't quite go down. Uh, the reason for that is it's hitting these ridges on the inside of the case. Uh, I'll probably dremel those out a bit. Right, so I've just finished dropping blobs of resin in between each of these power cable risers and allowing that to flow down. So that's now flowed into this gap where I'm pointing in there and then down in between the two circuit boards. So that's sealed up the entire circuit board sandwich if you like and what I'm just doing now with a clean stick is just running along here to wipe off the excess resin so I don't want um, a big blob sticking out there because when we put the case back on um, the case is going to slightly lip down this this lip here will go over the edge of the top circuit board and we need a, a gap for that to go in obviously if this was filled up completely with resin just where i'm scraping then the case wouldn't fit back on right, on the home straight now we're now going to work on the top circuit board i've put uh, masking tape all around the top circuit board here and we're going to basically just put a little flood of resin over everything except these uh, set switches here uh, they're pushing switches which we don't want to um, obviously seal up with resin because they won't move anymore. So I'm not going to put anything on top of those. We'll use plaster dip to seal those up later on. Switching back to the motor, the sensor harness that goes on the end of the motor is now completely epoxied up. Uh, on the other side, um, the circuit board's now covered with resin. So that's all covered there. What I also did just around the edge here. I've coated that all the way around just to seal it up and also on the contacts in there. So going back into the can, uh, this goes in like so. That fits in fine. Um, the resin hasn't got in the way of anything like that. But what I did find was that the end cap would not fit back on and slide down quite enough. Um, it, it is going flush now, but it wasn't going down completely. Uh, the reason for that... So be careful of this if you do this yourself. Uh, the resin that I put on the back of the sensor circuit board, I had to just file down slightly, um, probably about oh, a 
couple of sixteenths or less than a millimeter just to take a little bit off it was just sitting a little bit proud um, so this plate could go down properly so I can now reassemble the motor uh, before I do what I'm going to be doing is getting some marine grease and coating the bearings uh, faces uh, both sides of the bearings just in case any uh, water does get inside the motor uh, this will just help keep the bearings protected uh, what I will be doing when the uh, cans going back together that's one side of the bearing done I'll do the other in a moment when I put the can together what I'm going to do is to just dab plaster dip around the metal edge here so that when I put this back on it will squidge together and make a seal uh, the ESC is currently uh, curing the top is now epoxied up you can see that shining in the light there uh, it's a little bit squidgy still at the moment I'll pull these masking tape off quite soon Right, so we're just about to put the motor back together. Uh, don't forget you've got three small screws that go and hold the sensor harness in place. Once they're in and tightened up, we're just going to dab the plaster dip around the edge. No need to tighten these up massively. They're not, uh, not exactly load-bearing, so be careful it's going into aluminium threads. Right, that's in place, so now dabbed some plaster dip on already, I'll just go around again with a little lick. This is just to make a nice seal at the end of the can. We will be going around the outside of the can with some extra plaster dip, but this just helps give it as good a seal as possible. So here's the can about to, the end cover about to go on. It just slides on like so squidges on. Right so I've got two countersunk screws going here and then the, the last screw is the one that has the uh, little clamp for the sensor cable. So here's our sensor cable. Now that will get plaster dipped a little bit later on. I guess you could epoxy resin that on if you were feeling incredibly brave but uh, Yes, it might be better sealed up, but it's never going to come off, and I don't think that's a good idea. You're obviously going to want to take your motor apart at some stage to do maintenance on the bearings, so um, I wouldn't recommend epoxying the outside of your motor for a moment. Plastic is much better because you can peel it off, take your motor apart, do some maintenance on the bearings, and put another coat back on to seal it up. Right, on the front of the motor, we've got the rotor back in. I've just put a lick of plaster dip all around the face. It's the inside bearings marine greased up. I nearly forgot, I need to put a bit of marine grease on the shaft again just to stop it uh, binding onto the bearing so it's easier to take apart in the future. And then we just pop this on. Here we go. Right, that's in place. So what I need to do now is to get the uh, get the screws back in. Now what I'm going to do before I put the screws in is to put another dob of plaster dip on top of each hole where the screws go in. So as we put the screw in, it will bring plaster dip down the screw thread to hopefully seal up those threads. Um, don't worry, this is not going to lock the threads. Plaster dip will you know tear as you undo the the Allen bolts, but it will help to kind of make a another little seal um, to stop water getting in th past the threads of the screws. Here's the front end of the motor back on and I've now dobbed plaster dip onto the top of each of the six allen bolts that hold the faceplate on and then I've dobbed plaster dip on each of the six holes where you can mount the motor into your um, model. The reason for that is that I want those sealed up. Uh, we will be driving two screws in there to put it back in the Rubicon later on but um, we'll deal with that later. And the other place you want to seal up, and this will need a bit of, um, well, probably about two or three coats of plaster dip, is to start to get down and daubed into that void there. So that's actually going, there's quite a, a big hole that water could get into. So you're going to need to put quite a generous amount of plaster dip in that to seal it up. And of course the other place we need to seal up is our sensor connector. And also we will need to seal up on top of the uh, 
the screw heads. Now when you're putting your plastic dip around these screws you want to aim to get about uh, or a good a good sort of five millimeters past the screw with the plastic dip so it's got a good surface area of the can to grip onto. So we're nearly there I've got the uh, case dremeled somewhat I've had to uh, sculpt out this bottom part to uh, clear the resin on top here and um, also inside there's these kind of uh, reinforcing ridges that butted onto the underside of the circuit board they were touching on the resin so they're all dremeled out now uh, that fits back on okay and the top of the case wasn't so bad all I had to do was just slightly file that area just to give it a little bit more space because there's resin on the circuit board here so the top part of the case goes back on and we'll now screw back together once that's screwed back together then I'll seal up the edge of the case um, with resin again and all around the joints here so I won't be resining the set um, button positions I want to be able to operate those so I'll be using plastic dip for that uh, these are still probably can't hear it but I can feel they're, they're still working so we're nearly there let's uh, get the case screwed back together right before I seal the case up I just wanted to test out uh, the rig. Uh, hopefully I haven't broken the ESC. I've decided I'm actually going to plaster it at the edge of the um, the case just in case I want to take it apart again. It's also going to be, I have to plaster it anyway because this sensor wire which I may need to unplug or not, um, I need to plaster it around the edge of that so um, I figure I may as well just plaster it the whole thing. Anyway let's see if it's still working. Okay it turns on, that's a good sign. Yep, there we go. So the RS Gen 2 is still functioning, completely potted with epoxy resin, and uh, phew, <laughs> that's a bit of a relief for me. I, you know, I think I was careful with it, but you, know, you never really know until you plug it back in. But uh, that's a good sign. So let's get this case sealed up. Right, final thing before we can get this back in the truck is to seal up the uh, output shaft end of the motor. Now what I'm going to do is get some marine grease and just squirt down into the bearing so it comes up the shaft slightly proud right so we've got a ring of marine grease there and just uh, an o-ring that o-ring is slightly too large for the shaft so there's a little bit of movement um, it's not hugely loose it's just very very slightly the idea behind that being that as the shaft rotates it won't drag too much now that will hold the marine grease down and for marine grease now with your finger now you need to wash your hands once you've done this because marine grease is not the best thing for your skin in the world I'm just going to drag my finger round let's just wipe that off right so now on the motor we have a, a cone of marine grease with the o-ring in place and what I'm going to do now is to plaster dip on top of that, right, so hopefully you can see just around the output shaft of the motor now we've got some fresh plaster dip drying um, and that will sort of shrink down and hopefully hold that um, cone of marine grease and o-ring down onto the bearing stop the water getting in. I don't think it's going to be 100% waterproof but better than nothing. Right so by the wonders of video we've actually wound on six months since I did the start of this with the epoxy waterproofing and the reason for the gap is I've just been running the Rubicon through all sorts of stuff um, every month at competitions, last October in 2014 in the Scale Nationals, we're in um, February 2015 and I'm doing the end of this, about, about six months of abuse, completely submerged underwater, going through streams, mud, all sorts and it's not missed a beat, completely reliable and a big thumbs up for the epoxy resin. Uh, if we just have a look inside, I can just uh, tell you what's happened, which is not much really. You, for the observant of you will see that my rigs co change quite a lot with suspension and bumpers and so on, but I'll cover that in another video. But uh, the RS Gen 2, since I stuck it in there, um, six months, absolutely fine. The Rock 412 has been completely perfect as well. I have had this out once just to look at the bearings after doing lots of underwater running and um, absolutely fine. I think because I put um, a lick of marine grease 
around this pinion end of the motor and then covered it with uh, plastic tape. I think that's really stopped stuff getting in. Obviously the rest of the case was nicely sealed up. Uh, here's another Rock 412 that I've got for a future build I'll show you on my channel. And um, this, I've just done the censoring in there with resin to waterproof that. And I've gone a bit resin mad actually. Um, here's the original Novak Ballistic that um, for those of you following my channel you've seen me running this in the bath uh, with my initial water testing and um, I've taken this apart, peeled off all of the plastic dip off the sensor ring of this um, sensor brushless motor and that's got a covering of epoxy resin now for long term waterproofing and I've got another RS Gen 2 that's going to go in a future build uh, this has been potted inside as I've shown you at the start of this video same process and just sealed up with a plastic dip as a second level and all ancillary things I've been doing now as well so for example here's a beck that the case is sealed up with resin both ends completely waterproof uh, a remote control winch controller here um, it's all shiny because it's completely potted in resin 100% waterproof and even things like the lipo alarms um, I drove my rig through uh, a lake recently with a LiPo alarm sensing the 3S battery that I run my light bar off of and um, it wasn't waterproofed and it started beeping and making a kind of sound and stopped working. Since then I've got some more and potted these and I've tested these underwater and they work absolutely fine as long as you cover up the fine circuits leaving the pins exposed they work great. So I just cannot um, recommend epoxy potting enough. Plasti dip I'm not using now for any of the electronics. I'll still dip my batteries in Plasti dip, but the other stuff I'm using resin. It's just so much better. So big thumbs up for that. Obviously, with things like your motor or your speed control, uh, you do ruin your warranty if you take them apart and do what I've just shown you. But I think that the benefits far outweigh the risks there. As long as you're careful, you can get a extremely waterproofed and very reliable setup. So I hope this video was useful. Um, it's a bit, a bit long and nerdy, but uh, there you go. <laughs> you get that kind of stuff on this channel. Any questions as ever, please post them below. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you with another video soon.